So let us see how we can use these different options to protect and give access to uh, SAP programs and uh, SAP system. The one of the options that you have, uh, if you are, if you have to use SA38 in the production system, is to use and ensure that every program is assigned to an authorization group in the system. So, to execute a program, the users would need access to the authorization object as underscore program because that object controls the activity of executing programs. Now, as underscore program has two objects in it, uh, two fields in it. One of them is the user action, the other, other field is authorization group. So, to execute a program, the minimum authorization value for the user action field has to be submit. So, that is equivalent to execute. So, let's say you have SA38, the user has access to SA38, and S underscore program contains uh, the object contains the value submit and the authorization group as star. So what it means is that the user can execute execute any program in the SAP system. So controlling this object, S underscore programs is very very important and critical. But here in this case the important value is the authorization group field. Whatever the value that you give here for the authorization group in the authorization group field the users can execute the programs only from that authorization group plus they can also execute programs which are not assigned to any authorization group so that is kind of a loophole in this concept where even though you are controlling s underscore program by specifying an authorization group in the authorization group field, the users can still execute programs which are not assigned to any group. Now, once the user can get to SA38, the user can pretty much enter any report name and or program and execute it. Now, once you execute the, uh, when the user executes the transaction SA38, Additional authorization checks will be checked only if there is a value for the authorization group in the report attributes. For example, let's see what it means. So to check the attributes of a program, you go to the transaction SA38, and then let's say give a program name, let's say RS Del CUA. Select the attributes and click on display. Now the program is protected from you know uh, whether you can whether you can whether a user can execute this program or not is protected by the value in this field. In, you know, for example, in this field, there is no value, which means anybody who has access to SA38 can execute this program because this, there is no protection on this program. Uh, let's take another example. Uh, let's say RS Param, for example. There again, if you look at the attribute of this field of this program, uh, but this is assigned to an authorization group called AM40. Now, what it means is, if a user wants to access, execute this program, then he would need access to the SM underscore program object should contain AM40 as a value in the authorization group field. Otherwise, the, even though user has access to SA38, uh, he, uh, he or she cannot execute this program. So, the, uh, the authorization group, whether a program is assigned to an authorization group or not, can be seen from the attributes of the program. So, you come to SA38, enter the program name, select the attributes, and say display and you can see the attributes of the program. So if there is a value for the authorization group 
the user must have that value in SMS program. For example, in our example that we saw for RS per amp, RS per amp was assigned to an authorization group PM40. So to user to execute that program, RS per amp, in the S underscore program object, the user should have access to, uh, should be uh, the value AM40. Now if there is no value, however, the only authorization, author additional authority checks that will occur are those inside of the report or program the user is executing in the transaction SA38. So if they don't, if the programs do not have uh, if the programs are not assigned to any authorization group, then the authority check statements are the only thing that can pro give uh, any kind of uh, security, security on the programs. So let's say what we can do with uh, authorization groups. The op this is one of the options that we have for securing access to programs using SA38. Now what do we need to do? For custom programs that are developed by the customer, it's a very good idea to, or uh, it's a very good practice to include or assign the programs to an authorization group. Now how are the programs assigned to authorization groups? So to assign a program to an authorization group, you use the trans report RSCS AUTH. So this is important. Uh, this assigns uh, the program RSCS AUTH. Using this program, you can assign authorization groups to programs. Uh, now programs may or may not have authorization groups assign already assigned to them. So if a program does not have an authorization group assigned to it, you can assign it or if a program is already assigned to an authorization group and if you want to change it to something else then you can still use RSCS AUTH to do it and that we'll see in our demo. Now users continue to use SA38 but every program execute, executed from this transaction code has an authorization group for additional protection so you need to have that. Yeah. Uh, the same thing is the first point uh, that every program, it's a good practice that every program is associated or assigned to an authorization group for additional protection. And it's also a good practice to include an authority check statement inside the code of the program. So. So like I said earlier, authority check statements give additional layer of protection on protection for the programs uh, that are getting executed. So using the program RSCSAUTH, you can assign an authorization group to all executed programs or to individual programs or program groups. Uh, we'll see how to do assign this authorization groups to programs. Uh, you can execute RXS, RSCS, AUTH without modifications. You can transport the changes and copy them after a release upgrade. So the changes that you make uh, using a, you, will have, you can transport them also. The program to an authorization group assign, assignment is defined in the table TADIR. TA, TADIR. So if you look at this table uh, TADIR in using the transaction SA16, then you can see the list of programs in the SAP system. And also you can find out whether uh, those programs are assigned uh, to what authorization groups are those programs uh, associated with. So, it's a very important table which uh, TADIR contains the relationship between uh, the programs and the authorization groups. There's another table called PPGP which contains the list of program authorization groups. 
uh, this table TPGP does not contain the program name, but uh, whatever pro authorization groups for programs have been defined in this uh, in the system, uh, those that list, the authorization group uh, list, you can see that in the table TPGP. Now, when you assign an authorization group to a program using the program RSCSAUTH, that assignment is stored in the table TADIR, but the authorization group is not entered in TPGP. So to update the authorization group uh, information uh, from TADIR into TPGP, you have to use the report RSABAUTH. So what it does is, it will pick, when you execute RSA BAUTH, what it does is, it will take the authorization group, list of authorization groups from TADIR and update in TPGP. So you execute this RSCSAUTH first to assign the authorization group to the program and then you execute RSA BAUTH to update the table. Uh, the list of uh, authorization groups in the table TPGP. So you might have to use both this RSCS AUTH as well as RSA BAUTH uh, to update TPGP. So let us go and check uh, using a demo how to assign an authorization group for a program uh, using uh, the transaction, uh, uh, so using the report RSCS AUTH and uh, then we'll see how to update the table TPGP using RSABAUTH. <laughs>